I'm in the Yakima Valley visiting the De Brule Vineyard. This vineyard has been repeatedly recognized as one of the top vineyards in Washington State. So I'm meeting with Carrie Shields to learn how they grow their world-renowned grapes. So you've gone all over the world studying wine, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. That's cool. And then what brought you back? Here. that we have the best wine grapes in the world <laughs> in Washington. I love it. Well, and it's also a really unique opportunity because I could work in a place like California, I could work in a place like Europe, but nowhere else do we have, we're in this perfect moment of there, it's dynamic, it's innovative, we're discovering, we're doing amazing amount of research, we have some history and some knowledge, but we're at that moment of really defining where the industry is. So it's a very exciting place to be. Gary took me over to their Riesling vines, some of the oldest in the state. She explained that during this time of year, they're busy working on pruning. We need to make these better. Okay. Because you can grow for quality or you can grow for quantity. But a lot of times you have to trade off for, for quantity if you're trying to get better fruit. Okay. So what we do is we pick these longer shoots and say you only get two clusters. Oh, so then they're so gonna... we go down to the beginning, we say this guy gets one, two. Mm -hmm. So we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that guy. So every time we do this, we reduce our yield, we reduce our profitability, but we increase the quality. And since what we're growing for is quality, mm -hmm. it's more important to us to have yeah. good fruit than a lot of fruit. In addition to pruning, they're also busy covering the vines. These nets help protect the grapes from hungry birds. So we will lose our entire crop to birds. No way. Yeah, the if, entire we, crop. if we don't cover them with nets like this. And the starlings come and attack from the top. But so the, this helps protect that. So this helps protect that. But the robins, if we left it like this, the robins will fly up underneath and eat everything anyway. Smart suckers. So what we're gonna do is every couple of, like every other vine, mm -hmm. we'll just take one of these bread ties and stick it through and tie the nets together yes. and tell the starlings to keep yourselves out of right. there. That's a good spot. Luckily they're faster at this than we are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Carrie said the vineyard is located on a basalt hillside that the ancient Columbia River used to flow through. As we were walking, she found some evidence of that river. And you can see that these are different, different geological sources. So you've oh, got yeah, different absolutely. river rocks uh -huh. from different parts of the Canadian Rockies, yep. the different colors or different minerals. And this is basalt. Mm -hmm. And so this is the bedrock of all of, all of this hill and, and all of the all Columbia River. All this just makes it it makes, Great. Yeah, it makes it really unique and interesting. Carrie said they make up to 3,000 cases of wine each year. Next up, the tasting room. So this is our Cabernet Merlot blend from the Hillside Vines where we were putting the nets on today. Awesome. And this is our flagship, one of the yeah. top scoring wines in Washington every year. Thanks for sharing. And it's got that nice brule cherry, but lots of... Ooh, it's smooth. It's really good. You guys do a great job. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking me out into the field and well, thanks for coming. To come back here and cool off a little bit and enjoy your fabulous wine. Yeah, feel free to hang out as long <laughs> as you want or come back anytime.